Copyright 87, same year I was born. All right. Let's go into the castle and get the plot going. Bow. That is where I'm standing, you dumb old game. When you speak to King Edward, he sighs and says, Sir Graham, I am an old man. I fear my end is near. I have chosen you to prove yourself worthy of the throne. As you know, our kingdom is weak and poor. I have knowledge of the existence of three things that would make our kingdom wealthy and strong. Somewhere within our kingdom, there is a magic mirror that tells the future. There is a magic shield that will protect the bearer from mortal harm. Finally, there is a magic chest that is always filled with gold coins. Go, Sir Graham, go and bring, go and bring me these three treasures. If you succeed, you will inherit the throne. Okay, so uh, if you read the instruction manual, I have knowledge of uh, these treasures is kind of the understatement of the year. Because uh, if you actually read the backstory in the instruction manual, uh, it's not just that uh, Edward knows about these treasures, it's that these treasures were stolen from him. Uh, often because of his own, or not even stolen, he was tricked out of them. He was conned out of these treasures. They traded a sorcerer, the mirror, for a magic spell that would bring them a child, but it didn't work. Uh, they traded the shield to a dwarf uh, in exchange for a root that would restore the queen's health. And they traded the, uh, well, they didn't trade the chest. The chest was stolen by a witch who was in disguise of a princess who was to be the king's second wife. So, you know. Thing is, he's uh, King Edward the Benevolent, not King Edward the Intelligent. Okay, the instruction manual isn't even where it stops because uh, I've talked about this before, but someday I am going to do an obsession on this book, which is the strategy guide slash novelization of all the games. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's bizarre and amazing. You know, it's best to not think too much about the um, about any of it in the King's Quest games, ab about the the way the nation is run. Anyway, I'm off to find the treasure. Oh, the fairy godmother. Gentle Sir Graham, I am your fairy godmother. Your quest is indeed noble. Is it, though? You're, I, I'm just questing to boost the economy of one country. There's the elf wandering behind the trees. Well, he keeps moving. The elf, impressed by your friendliness, gives you a magic ring. Kind person, know that once, only once. This ring will make you invisible, he says, and then disappears. So, you know, an elvish ring that uh, makes you invisible. Gee, I wonder where Roberta Williams got that idea from. So this dragon is protecting the magic mirror. So there are two ways to deal with this. I can either kill the dragon, or I can merely incapacitate him. Now, you get more points for taking nonviolent routes in this series, but uh, I never really cared about the points. So, would you guys rather see a dead dragon or a humiliated dragon? The water hits the dragon squarely in the mouth, extinguishing his roaring flames. No fire! How mortified and embarrassed the dragon must be! Moving a huge boulder and leaving, the dragon creeps off to sulk. And he just wanders off. The magic mirror is framed with ornate mahogany wood polished to a high sheen. Does that look like ornate mahogany wood to you on that mirror? Yeah, that is definitely not the same mirror design that was uh, on the screen proper. You look into it and see a vision of yourself with a crown on your head. Well, that means I'm definitely winning the game, so uh, I can just play recklessly now. Does anyone want to see what it looks like when you kill the dragon? Because I can uh, restore the other game. Killing the dragon is done like this. You throw the dagger at the dragon and strike it in the heart. Death for the dragon is instant. 
that is so gruesome. <laughs> like, the graphics in this game are usually so slight, but they really went all out for a dying dragon with a dagger in it. So, uh, yeah, that's not canon. That didn't happen because uh, we just embarrassed the dragon and now we can walk out this way. This is the sweetest little gingerbread house you ever saw. The walls are cake, the roof is frosting, the chimney looks delicious, and the candy path and cookie fence are unbearably tempting. Yum, the house takes even better than it looks. So the witch isn't home. Uh-oh, she's coming home. Okay, now the witch you can kill with no repercussions. Courageously, you manage to push the witch into the oven where she flashes and melts away in a harmless blob. Congratulations. Seven points. You, you get points for murdering the witch, but uh, you lose points for murdering the dragon. But, you know, that was the witch who wronged King Edward, so... Now, they raised the stakes for the woodcutter and his wife uh, when they did the remake in 1990, uh, namely by um, making the wife sick. You know, uh, not, not quite fridging her, but um, similar principle, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Visiting friends. Uh, I'm going to be a dick. <laughs> Very inconsiderate to eat in front of these poor starving people. Oh, so I did eat it. I just felt guilty while doing it. Puzzled, the couple wonders why you have given them a bowl. <laughs> and they're just confused. And there's no point. It's fun. Okay. The woodcutter family is very grateful that you have given them a bowl of stew. Now they will have at least one last meal. God, that's still so morbid. I feel like Roberta Williams is a tortured soul. As a token of their gratitude, they offer you their last earthly possession, the woodcutter's fiddle. So even Daventry had turkey in the straw. We know that much. I mean, yeah. But it's in the public, it's the only known fiddle song, I guess. And it's in the public domain, so. As you approach the bridge, a mean, ugly troll appears. He will not let you cross his bridge. It is a well-known fact that goats hate trolls intensely. You should move aside and let this goat take care of this nasty troll. The old goat, seeing the troll, the arch enemy of all goats, charges the troll and butts him into oblivion. The bridge is now yours. And then the goat just wanders off. Unaddressed. Something that was also sort of mocked in uh, Peasant's Quest, uh, parody in Peasant's Quest with the uh, the story of what happened to the baby after it wandered off. You see a crotchety old gnome pacing around his lean-to. The old gnome tells you he has something that may be very useful to you. Your task is to guess his name in three guesses and the gift will be yours. Good luck. What is your first guess? Okay, now this was the puzzle that was here just to torture people. Because obviously this is Rumpelstiltskin. But the hint we got from the witch is sometimes you have to think backwards. So it's Rumpelstiltskin backwards, but not just spelled backwards. It's with a backwards alphabet where A equals Z, B equals Y, C equals X, and so on. And it's a really bad puzzle. They make up for it by if you get the puzzle, puzzle wrong, you still, like, you still get something that helps you get through the game, but just with fewer points. But it's... Honestly, it's honestly easier to be, or it's, it's less tedious to deal with if you lose this puzzle than if you win it. But because I'm turning it over to the chat, do you want me to get the gnome's name correct or do you want me to get it wrong? If I get it correct, he will give me beans for a beanstalk. If I get it wrong, he will give me the key to unlock the door in the mountain. 
either way, I get brought up to the land of the clouds. Um, but climbing the beanstalk is way more tedious than going up the stairs in the mountains. I don't remember it offhand, so I need to go to the companion again. I-F-N-K-O-B-H-G-R-O-G-H-P-R-M. That is Rumpelstiltskin in backwards alphabet. If Nikob So I got some magic beans. Now I don't remember exactly where I'm supposed to, uh, exactly where I'm supposed to plant the beans. Anyway, big evil rat. Treasure, treasure, give treasure or no go door. Give treasure now. Now, of course, we have lots of treasure, but giving him treasure would lose us points. What else do we have that a rat might want? Why, you're the, yeah. Why, I believe cheese is something. <sighs> the rat drools at the side of the cheese and snatches it from your hand. You might want to count your fingers. Oh, might I? Might I want to? You count your fingers and I'm relieved to see you still have all of them. <laughs> the magic shield will protect you from this dangerous sorcerer that we barely got to see because he was just behind the trees. How is that not a sustainable place? There's flowers growing. How is this place more sustainable? I don't understand. Okay. Not in this game, but in the next game, the witch is named Hagatha. In this game, it's Dahlia. And I'm convinced that is a reference to... Uh, uh, Bertie Worcester's aunts, Aunt, Aunt Agatha and Aunt Dahlia. I've never seen official confirmation, but with the level of uh, reference you usually find in the King's Quest games, I wouldn't be surprised. You are in the land of the clouds. It is rumored that a giant lives up here. Surprise, surprise. Can I not do it until uh, I'm actually on the screen with the giant? Anyway, this is where the Jack and the Beanstalk giant turns into the David and Goliath turns into Goliath, speaking of Magic Mountain. Um, there are ways to defeat this giant without killing it, but uh, I prefer to go with the biblical reference myself, because it's King's Quest, why wouldn't you go with the reference? Okay. You put the pebble in the sling, take careful aim, and luckily hit the giant in the forehead. He falls down dead. And he died, died, died. It's easy to take a magic chest from a dead giant. All right. Um, time to win the game, I think. Remember when he pushed this boulder? Good times. Are these actual knights or are they just suits of armor? Just armor. I'm one of King Edward's knights. Why didn't I get armor in this game? Why am I just dressed like Robin Hood? As you approach the throne, the king himself rises to commend you for a job well done. Fine. Oh, going this way. Oh, oh. <laughs> no dignity for any of the kings here. Bah. He did. From the seemingly lifeless king, you hear these words. Well done, Sir Graham. You have been a good and faithful servant. Your reward is well deserved. My kingdom is now yours. My corpse is just going to be at the foot of your throne now. Great moments with King Edward. With these words, King Edward the Benevolent dies. And he died, died, died. And now I'm wearing the crown. The experiences of your quest will be invaluable to you as you begin your reign as King of Daventry. Yes, because I walked into a cabin and gave a woodcutter some stew and pushed a witch into an oven, now I will really know how to lead a kingdom.
dignity and daventry. Oh, and he disappeared. He Jedi'd away when dying. Just like Yoda. What child is this King Graham of Daventry? So now the game's just over and I just sit here forever. Yay! And I was only 12 points short. Well, that was King's Quest 1. A game that I love both despite of and because of its ridiculousness. <laughs> He's one of those self-cleaning dead kings. Uh, you gotta love him.